In this video, I'll first show you guys how to find a formula for the special integrating factor in terms of just y for this almost exact differential equation. And we'll just code that to be mu of y right here. And let's get to work. First, we are going to multiply everything right here by mu of y. So you see that's what I did right here. Mu of y times this term. And we add it with mu of y times that, right? And then mu of y times 0 it is still 0. And now we want this result to be exact. In order for this to be exact, we have to do the partial derivative. Be sure we take this right here, and we do the partial of that with respect to y, because this was with dx earlier. And this right here, it was with dy, and we'll take the partial of this with respect to x. And here is the trickier part, because as you can see right here, we're taking a partial of this right here with respect to y, and notice that mu of y, so mu is a function of y, right? And here we have m of x, y, that means m is also a function of y. This is the product of two functions, because y is the variable in the y world. Right here, we have to use the product rule. So I will put down the first function right here, and we multiply by the derivative second, and I'll just write down this as partial m with respect to y, and then we add it with the second function, which I'll just write down m, and we multiply by the derivative of the first, which I will just write down mu prime of y. Right, so be sure to use the product rule because both of the mu and the m, they are functions of y. However, on this side here, we are taking a partial of this with respect to x. That means y is the constant, right? So mu of y can just stay right here, and we do the partial with n with respect to x. So I just write down partial n with respect to x like that. We don't need the pro, uh, product rule here. That's nice. Right, next. As we can see from this equation here, we have this term has the mu of y. Likewise, this right here also has mu of y, right? Let me bring this to the right-hand side and then factor out the mu of y. So that's what I did right here. As you can see, I factored out the mu of y. And this was positive partial n with respect to x. And I move this to the right hand side, so we have the minus partial m with respect to y, like that. Alright, so this right here stays like that. And what I want to do next is, you see, this is mu prime, and this is original mu. I would like to divide both sides by the original mu. So I'll put this down in the denominator right here. So you see, we have mu prime of y over mu of y. And in the meantime, I want to divide both sides by m. So you see we have this right here. And the reason we want to put the derivative on the top and the original on the bottom is because now I can integrate both sides. And be sure when you do this, you have to remember that we integrate both sides with respect to y. As you can see, this is all about y. So be sure you put on dy right here. And of course, I'll do that right here as well. When you integrate this with respect to y, you get ln absolute value of mu of y. And the easiest way to see this is, if you take the derivative of this, you'll get back to that. The derivative of ln of something is 1 over something, and we multiply by, because the Chinglo says so, the derivative of the inside, which is mu prime. So that's what we have on the top. Anyways, this is pretty much what we have. And we have the ln absolute value of this, right? To get rid of the ln, we do e to that, we do e to that, so this and that will cancel. And by the way, you don't have to worry about plus d because we really don't need to have the plus d. We just need to have the function part in order to make the original work. All right, so I do e to that power, e to that power on both sides. And on the left-hand side, I technically have the absolute value of mu of y. And then on the right-hand side, I have e as the base. And then this integral as the power. And before I move on to the next step, let me just make a remark. This will work only if this term right here, after you do the partial n with respect to x minus the partial m with respect to y, divided by m. Hopefully, everything simplified it, and we get an expression that only depends on y. Okay? Only depends on y. Because x is not allowed. On the left-hand side, we only have mu of y x is not allowed at all. So be sure, the left-hand side only has y, the right-hand side also should just contain y. Right now, a lot of people ask me, what should I do with the absolute value? 
and usually you can just say okay ignore it but technically this is how you can do it okay in order for you to get rid of the absolute value seriously you can just really just get rid of the absolute value but be sure you put a plus minus on the right hand side and now you have actually two choices you can take mu of y as the positive version of e to this integral or you can take mu of y as the negative of e to this integral right here both will work as the integrating factor okay you can imagine if you do the negative version throughout the original equation i can just divide everything by negative again and then becomes the positive right anyways nobody likes the negative so mu of y let's take this expression as the special integrating factor so this is the one that we'll be using and as you can see i put on nx minus my okay this means the partial of n with respect to x and this means the partial of m with respect to y okay so they are the same thing this right here is easier to write of course and here we have it this is the formula for the special integrating factor in terms of just y and you should watch my other video i have to show you guys how to do it with just x right mu of x so be sure you watch that and now let me show you guys an example on this right here so now i will demonstrate to you guys how the formula that we got earlier works here we have this differential equation and in this video i just want to demonstrate how that formula works so let me tell you guys that this right here it's not exact and this right here it does have the special integrating factor in terms of just y so we can use the mu of y formula okay and you have to watch my other videos later on because i will have to show you how we can solve a differential equation like this without knowing too much okay anyways let's get to work right here i will label this as m i'll label this as n and let's just go ahead and make this super clear so i will write down m sub y this means i have to take the derivative right here with respect to y right the partial derivative that means 4x plus third power is going to be zero and this is technically a constant so i'll write down 6x squared and the derivative of cosecant y is going to be negative cosecant y cotangent y be sure we know our derivative table really well and here we have n sub x right that means the derivative of x to the fourth power is 4x to the third power and this is technical a constant so we maintain the cotangent y see i told you they are not the same that means the original is not exact right well as i mentioned earlier we can actually make this into an exact differential equation because we can use that mu of y formula so let's put that down and this right here it is e as the base integral for the power and right here we have the following we have n sub x minus m sub y o divided by m like this and this is with respect to y so we put on dy right here okay put the y and right have to match and you will see this expression right here at the end it's going to be just expression in terms of y only okay let's see we are going to have e as the base integral for the power n sub x is that let's write it down 4x to the third power cotangent y and then we are going to minus m sub y which is this but we are minus a negative so let me put down as a plus right here like this so we have that 6x squared cosecant y cotangent y like all this okay on the denominator here we have the original m so we have to put down 4x to the third power plus 6x squared cosecant y the original m like that and all in all this is dy and a re real quick hint you see the m and m they match but on the top you're talking about the partial derivatives the bottom right here it's the original and it's also the same for the other formula the n and n will match but anyways let's focus on this all right this is a big expression but on the top i have cotangent y cotangent y i can factor that out and i will factor that out and we have cotangent y in the front and this is 4x to the third power plus 6x squared and we still have that left right cosecant y like that and you see this and that are exactly the same therefore i can just cancel them out 
what's left over. Cotangent Y is an expression in terms of Y only, isn't it? So all in all, this is just going to be E, and then the integral on the top we have cotangent Y dy. That's all. And what's the integral of cotangent y? Well, I'm just going to tell you guys the answer. This is ln absolute value of sine of y. Right? That's it. And you don't need to worry about the plus c. And this is pretty much all we have, right? And you see e and ln, they cancel each other. So that's pretty much all. So as you can see, we have mu of y is equal to absolute value of sine of y. But let me just say this for you. We are going to use mu of y we don't worry about the absolute value, okay? Just the function part is all we care. That use mu of y as sine y. This is all we need, okay? You don't worry about the absolute value. You don't worry about the plus c in integrating factor business. This is all we need. And when we figure this out, this is sine y that we are going to take and then multiply everything from the original, okay? So right here, from the original, I'll just multiply everything by sine y, multiply everything by sine y, and technically I also have to multiply zero by sine y, otherwise zero is gonna get jealous, but I know it's gonna be zero anyways, but let me just put that down. And once we do that, this will become an exact differential equation. So you'll see right here, we will just multiply this and that, so we have four x to the third power, sine of y like this and then we add it with this is 6x squared and sine y times cosecant y is just 1 right because notice this is just 1 over sine y so of course this and that will cancel each other out so this is what we have and we'll put parentheses and this is with dx of course and then we add it with sine y times this and notice cotangent y is what cotangent y is the same as cosine of y over sine of y. So the signs will cancel. That means we'll have x to the fourth power and we have the cosine of y like this. And this is dy. This is still zero anyways. And now let me tell you, this is exact because this is the same equation that I used in the previous video. And of course, I also tell you guys the answer. I show you guys how to solve this already in the previous video as well, right? So the answer for this is just going to be x to the fourth power sine of y plus 2x to the third power. This is equal to c. This is exact, so you should know how to solve it. And this is the answer. If you haven't seen the other video, just try to work this out. If you want to see how to do it, you know, click the link in the description. That's it.